plastic pollution. Every year, about 8 million tons of this type of waste ends up in our oceans, adding to the 150 million tons that's already there. And that figure could triple over the next decade if there isn't some sort of intervention. Much of this marine waste is non-degradable, but just how to clean it up has been the subject of debate among researchers and activists for several years as once pristine coastlines become more and more polluted. In tonight's Dispatch from Alameda, California, Kim Brunhuber takes a closer look at what's being done to fix all of this. Near a Los Angeles pier, a slow-moving stream of garbage. Plastic bags, plastic straws, plastic bottles, plastic lids. They flow by on an aquatic conveyor belt. It never stops. There's always more. On the water, anglers compete with sea lions for the fish that swim amidst the trash. All this plastic garbage is carried here by ocean currents and accumulates on shore. Seven years ago, this phenomenon gave Dutchman Boyan Slat an idea and inspired an extraordinary plan to clean it all up. When I was 16 years old, I was scuba diving in Greece and saw more plastic bags than fish. And um, yeah, at some point in time, I thought, well, uh, coastlines, there are very effective ways of catching plastic. So he thought, why not invent a floating coastline of sorts to gather up all that plastic? Across the bridge from San Francisco is the Alameda Assembly Yard. Workers have been at it since May, assembling what will become the longest floating structure in the ocean. What you see here is this very long uh, floating pipe. Which Here's his plan. An enormous U-shaped pipe will support a mesh screen, which will hang about three meters underwater. Can you explain how it actually works? Um, it's weighed down, and it, it, it moves slowly in the water. This is actually the part that uh, holds the plastic. The long floating tube, driven by currents and the wind, will funnel plastic into the mesh. Every few months or so, a vessel would come, like a giant garbage truck of the ocean, and would empty the system and take the plastic back to land, where it could then be uh, recycled. They hope to put the first one together by early September. Then they'll tow it out there into the Pacific Ocean, halfway between here and Hawaii, to the area known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Our research has shown that it contains 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic spread over an area that's twice the size of Texas. Slat says his device will gobble up half the garbage patch in five years, like a giant Pac-Man. If all goes well, then we hope to have the first plastic back on shore before the end of the year. But Slat admits it's still a big if. A recent survey of 15 ocean plastic pollution experts suggests some scientists consider his ocean cleanup project a quixotic dream, and that this giant plastic removal system could become the world's biggest piece of marine debris. There's so much cool tech in the world, and it kind of sucks to be like the Debbie Downer on this. But yeah. Oceanographer Kim Martini conducted an external like review of the project four years ago, and she believes several key problems still remain. The first, the very concept is flawed. It's just not going to work. When you put something out in the ocean, things are going to grow on it. It's going to make it heavy. It's going to drag it down. Then all the plastic that's at the surface is just going to actually just go over it. So it won't be actually capturing plastic anymore. She also believes the giant structure could be dangerous for ships and animals. These are like little tiny oases for animals to live on. And so it actually attracts it. And so when you do this at a large scale, you're going to start attracting more animals. And you're going to actually be attracting them to regions where you ha can ingest more plastic and also be sus um, susceptible to entanglement as well. So we see a light pole here. The project's chief there. financial officer says the, the structure will have lights and radar light reflectors light to prevent collisions. We are not pirates. We are working together with a lot of authorities. And he's confident he will withstand the extreme conditions of the open ocean. The design is made for 20 years survival at sea. As for the animals, some critics worry that this might actually harm wildlife. What's your response? That the system moves extremely slowly. So it moves at only 10 centimeters per second. Um, so yeah, really wildlife should have enough time to, to go around it. Uh, it's, it's, it will be much safer than say a, a boat going through the ocean. If the first one works, they hope to build a flotilla of 60 devices. The goal, to clean up 90% of the Pacific garbage patch by 2040. What we're seeing today really is just the tip of the iceberg. If we don't clean it up, 
then over the next few decades it's going to be much, much worse. Um, not just because the impact will be much larger, but also the smaller the pieces get, the harder it is to get out. Um, so uh, we'd much rather clean it up before that happens. So far they've raised more than $30 million in donations and private funding. Skeptics believe this massive investment reflects our obsession with solving the world's worst environmental problems with a technological magic bullet. It doesn't stop stuff coming into the ocean. It doesn't close the tap. And it's not really inspiring anyone to actually change their behaviors and make a difference. Yeah, right now this problem is very far away and it's invisible. If we bring these vessels full with plastic back into port, Slat insists collecting and displaying more than one trillion pieces of plastic will be a concrete illustration of an abstract problem, a dramatic reminder not to toss all that trash into our oceans in the first place. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Alameda, California.